<clears throat> Anybody who watched that Regis Fay, the only conclusion you should have came to was that the weight had nothing to do with the Devin victory. And I knew it. I was watching the Catterall fight. Mind you, Catterall didn't have anywhere near the amount of skills and the sharpness that Devin Haney had, and he was still able to execute the same game plan. All Devin Haney did was expose, was expose the Achilles heel. Oh, not for my first fate. Matter of fact, hold on. But all Devin really did was expose Regis's Achilles heel. And in reality, bro, it was already obvious. But just nobody seemed to be tuned in and tapped in enough to exploit it the way Devin Haney was able to exploit it. All that he, all that Regis was weak to was a two piece over that weak side or turning the corner and just running him into a two piece, into a straight one two. Now, when Jack Catterall got his at first, when he was trying to figure out what to do, all, Jack Catterall was throwing looping left hook, left overhand lefts, because they're both southpaws. He was trying to meet Regis Progray to the punch with an overhand left. When, and first of all, bro, look, that's one of the worst, dumbest things that you could ever do when you have something that's as good as a two-piece that could keep you safe and you could deliver power right but regardless we've seen jack catterall at first he was having trouble trying to figure regis out he understood how to turn him and how to how to how that he couldn't he didn't have lateral movement but he just didn't know how to really execute the game plan and catch him clean the way he needed to catch him clean you think what i'm saying so anyways later on in the fight he finally does get the two piece. He drops him. And I was literally calling for it the whole fight. Look, throw the two piece over the weak side. But it was crazy as Jack Catterall didn't even realize how he caught him. Like he did, but he didn't know how to get there, how to set it up, how to recreate that moment again. So that way he could get Regis up out of there. Like the whole time he's just he's just working, working. He's moving, he's turning, he's doing all the right stuff. But when Regis he does his head, he rolls his head, and he pops up. He postures up. He's sitting there. He's a sitting duck. There was never a two-piece that was really met, met there again the way that it should have been. You know what I mean? So uh, the only thing that was unfortunate, obviously, is that uh, Jack Catterall, though, as, 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 uh, you know, as hard as he was punching, he never locked into that game plan and continued to execute because that two-piece was not the part, original part of the game plan. You could tell. But anyways, I, I enough giving Jack Catterall credit. Here's what I will say, bro. Regis, you using Devin Haney's way as a scapegoat, those days are over with. Those days are over with because, bro, he literally never, not one time, right? I watched the fight a bunch of times. Yo, what's good, Vince? I watched the fight a bunch of times. And not one time during the Devin Haney fight was this dude ever relying on the fact that he weighed 165 pounds to do any real damage. The whole the whole fight was executing that game plan, turning Regis and running him into that two piece. If he does cross the gap, trying to do too much, here comes the uppercut and I'm gone. It was just that simple. You know what I mean? And then he did get it creative with different shots just to mix it up. He did spin towards his left hand to try to get him to throw it and encounter. You know, those are all part of his game plan. But the point was the difference in the performance was Jack Catterall didn't have the same game plan that Devin Haney did. But um, Devin Haney had, a, had you know, a, clearly a game plan that he stuck to it. He didn't rush. Regis, when he heard him, he just kept boxing, kept punching on him. You know what I mean? Kept the work clean. And Jack Catterall, he did get a little dirty in there. I seen somebody calling for Devin Haney versus Jack Catterall. My, that's a massacre. That's a massacre. That's a massacre. If them niggas fight, that's a massacre. Apparently, Bill Haney asked for it. Yeah. Yeah, he, he could, because he could unify. Because Dev could unify. That, that like, but, but then I think, um, I think the WBO, he's not even the official WBO champion, but that's a good comeback fight because he's going to spin Regis the exact same way that, uh, or he's going to spin Jack Catterall the same way he spun Regis. The same. It's, it was like, even though Jack Catterall was moving his feet, it looked like he did, um, he was, he was moving, but it didn't serve as much of a purpose. Like it did. He was getting to where he, he just knew like, okay, I need to move because Regis can't move. Okay, cool. We know that. But he didn't really line Regis with anything. When it was time to throw the punches, the punches were kind of all over the place. And that was the only issue I had with the performance. 
other than that, I mean, Jack Catterall balled out. He did what he was supposed to do. It just was kind of a kind of a dirty fade to some degree. Like Jack Catterall got cut, he got headbutt. You know what I mean? It wasn't completely clean. It could have. He could have won easier, to be honest. I think he could have won way, way easier. Go ahead and invite me whenever uh, you're trying to spar or invite me to the spar. But he could have won way easier than he did. Um, I was watching uh, the fight with this fool. Uh, Vince, say something. What's up, bro? Yeah, no, nah, yeah. So the homie was watching the fight in the whole fight. I'm calling for that two piece over the weak side. I'm calling like he was aligning himself and things like that. But the one time he caught him, he threw it, caught him clean, dropped him instantly. I just hope that all the talks of the weight, um being the problem with the Devin fight are over with I hope he doesn't try to say hey Jack Catterall was blocked I don't want to hear that Regis because you were throwing punches so off balance so off balance that you were falling on the ground you literally slipped in and dang it fell out the ring when you were trying to throw your overhand left you were galloping because you don't have the footwork to cut off the ring. So you started galloping. We went over the rules to try to catch Jack Catterall. And when Jack Catterall was committing to the movement, we couldn't catch him. So let's put all that to rest. I love seeing opponents, all the people who are talking crazy about Devin Haney or the opponents of Devin Haney that got into their fights afterwards. They look dumb as fuck right now. All of them. You know what I mean? Uh, Big Baby Anderson tested himself against Martin Bucoli, got destroyed. Now he knows how good he needs to be. I respect it. And because of that performance, Bob Arum said some damning things about matchmaking. Sergio Mora said some things about matchmaking with the Tim Zoo fight. You know what I mean? Now people are starting to, uh, the cracks in the crevices of the boxing game are starting to open up a little more, which I can appreciate, but you know it's like um Devin Haney it's like something about the bay bro like we had the little B curse now you got the Devin Haney curse like be on the right side of history or shut the fuck up at this point because it's getting bad like all of the shit people are saying it's falling by the wayside nobody can back it up and that's what I love about boxing uh, you can say all this type of shit until you gotta lace up and if you never lace up, side to side. right, like Virgil Ortiz, Tiafimo, Canelo, you know what I mean? If you never lace up, then everyone's just going to tell you to shut up. So I, I can, that part I can't appreciate. And now you're about to witness some high level sparring from me and the homie. I'm trying to help him get solid at this game, more solid. The only thing about fight night is a lot of it, you're gonna have to just get your experience. You're gonna have to take your lumps. You're gonna have to just fight those straight spammers. You're gonna have to fight those body spammers. Cause mind you, I'm on here, we're on here boxing the right way, but trying to box some of these cheesy styles, bro, it's difficult. Are you gonna look fucking annoying, bro. It's difficult. This guy is beating the shit out of you. You have to talk. Because you got to stay sturdy and box. Literally. Like, it's a different game when you're fighting somebody with a one punch KO punch. That's completely maxed out. And you got to box around that. Let's see some more head movement. There's nothing like this game. There's nothing like this game. Um, I put this fool on this game like two days ago, like where he's actually had a controller in hand and shit. He bought my Xbox or whatever, because I was like, man, we gotta make some videos again. So then, the next thing you know, we're sparring for the first time when he makes his character, because I just, just made this Evander Holyfield build, and I, this is probably like one of my favorite builds, second to the Vivo build, or maybe third, because Dave Benavidez is like my first favorite build. But anyways, um, 
He was like, man, this feel like I'm in a real fight. Because, you know, we box. And just like, it's one of them things, until you pick it up, just like boxing, until you lace up them gloves and get in the ring and standing in front of somebody for the first time, you just never really, you don't understand, like, the reason why this game is so goaded, you know what I mean? Yeah, this game is goaded. My, don't ask me about my record right now, bro. It's really disgusting. What is it now? I thought you had, like... Bro, I was what? I was, like, 10? 10 and 3, I think, before. 10 and... 10 and 3 or 10, yeah, no, 10 and 4? Yeah. For today? 16 and 6. That's not bad. It should because be you don't even two. have 10, uh, or you don't even have 10 losses yet, which is good for somebody who just, just picked this game up two days ago. I'm saying 16 fights though in two days is going to take this one. Actually, not even two days, bro. First time I hopped on this bitch, it was straight nine hours. I was literally playing this bitch for nine hours straight, bro, because I just kept getting the high of stopping people. You gotta land a big punch now. So yeah, no, exactly. But even when you lose, you know when you, you know how you lost. Oh, and then you instantly want to jump in and learn from your mistakes. And every loss makes you better at the game. Um, I've run. I mean, if you know, you, if you hear from the Instagram, you know I'm a high level player, and. To be in the to be in the gym sparring as the you know on the regular, he's had access to probably some of the best work, some of the best work in the world. No funny shit. So he's advanced. His skills are advancing a lot, a lot. It's like he has accelerated. His his skills are being accelerated. I guess the process of learning is being accelerated. But I, I mean, the I, the progress is showing for itself. You plus ten right now on your record. That's good stuff. And knockouts. The only thing you really have to learn how to deal with is how to avoid those power punches. Because when you punch yeah. sometimes, you have a habit of getting stuck in front of who you just punched on. But the, that stuff just comes with like instincts of like, just jabbing and moving and like how to stay out of range, manage your distance. Like, you'll really like, it just clicked for me one day, you got nice. managing my jab. <clears throat> And timing my jab correctly. That shit literally was just like I just was doing it. And I was like, oh, I'm doing it. I'm managing my jab. But it's insane. Like I box in this game the same way I box in real life. And the homie can attest to this. Keep that head moving. <laughs> yes. Keep your head moving. Damn. No, that was a good straight right hand. I have to start using that right hand over the over the nice. left to more often. I need to start Crawfording niggas. I, I I've done it and it's literally like got me like three or four KOs recently. It's rare that you get to see high levels work like this and then here inside the brain of like because it's a sparring session and i never see sparring online in this game at all like no one ever posts sparring footage on youtube in this game and i've streamed a few sparring sessions but now i have an official like sparring partner and we're not that difference in overall um the only difference is I had boost from legacy mode, otherwise me and him would probably be the same overall, so. But the fact you're 79, getting knockouts, you have a positive record, like, that's impressive in itself. And you're able to box, and then negates a whole lot of, like, the overall differences and stuff, you know what I mean? I do want to start going with higher overalls, because it's not even a challenge at 78. Exactly, because they don't have the power to cheese you, and then when you're out thinking them, you, you really just walk them down. Do, what just, I do need to work on is the body work. I do need to work on body. Yeah. Well, really, it's about like when 
to go because I honestly like if you let somebody throw and then you land a good body shot it just takes away like double or triple stamina so like I just keep the punches straight especially like earlier in the fight keep the punches straight if I'm gonna counter and set up a counter I like walk into range and then I go for the counter But I'm like on the very edge of my jab distance at all times. And I'm in and out of range just to make sure I don't get caught with jabs because some some people's jab can really freeze you. I upgraded my, my left hook again. No effort. She's at like the third star now, I think. You like this? Would you upgrade it? Update it, upgrade it too. I just upgraded my hook as well and my um uh, third third star? Yeah. Upgraded my hook and my straight. Oh you went for the straight? Oh yeah, straight to the body, yeah. I don't know how to use it, but I'm gonna figure it out. Use it as uh controlling the distance and the range. Because when you land straight to the body and people start losing stamina it usually like makes them chill out especially if it's early yeah i had to learn how to deal with a fucking body spammer today i still won but I was, damn bro like he yeah you struggled with stamina. him yeah he took all my stamina bro i was like oh shit. the key is to be like okay so like say you're you're, you're the you're or yeah you're here the key is to be just outside of range so that way you're not just that's all they did and then exactly then you catch him when he when he gets his shit off so you just got to be right out of range yeah, what I messed up was I kept holding guard, so it was super. It was making slow. you slow, but there. you can. That's the thing. Yeah. You can, but you have to stand, and then when they get ready to throw, you just walk backwards, because then the dude will throw the punch at where you were instead of where you're going. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, I figured that out. In the because in this part. game, it's literally like real life, where it's like, if you wait to the last second to like move then the dude isn't gonna just follow you to where you're going. Like if you're always moving, then the dude, you're, the other guy is gonna lunge further and catch you on the way out. But see what I'm saying? He'll throw like as to where you are, it'll fall short once you get the, the movement down. So really, I like to move and just get to spots. Move your head. Get to little, like get to spots, work in spots. Even if I'm gonna move defensively, I just like to get to a spot, and then they'll leave with punches, and I just boom, inch backwards, inch backwards, and then when they're whipping punches, I'm fake away coming forward, and then I'm getting out of range again, just to get them to punch. Playing with the sim guys made it made me learn how to move without having to dash, like how to walk properly. Because oh. the sim, the simulation players, the simulation rules, uh, there's like no dashing or whatever. So you have to like I, walk. Yeah. I think I have that. Now nah, it's just like a thing. It's like a. It's like uh. It's like Michael Myers on Call of Duty. Like them niggas. It's like uh, community based rules. But just learning how to like walk so that way you can avoid punches. Them niggas have ma like distance management locked in. And honestly, it's a good skill to learn because it makes you save a bunch of stamina. So that was like, bro, that would dash. How the fuck am I supposed to counter? But no, I learned for sure. Hmm. So now I mix in dashing with walking. More walking than dashing. Cause at one point I was like, I wasn't necessarily a dash spammer, but I was losing way more stamina. 
then once I started learning, like working with the sim guys, basically it was like I went to training with a different trainer. That's how it felt. Cause when I came out of there, at first I was getting cooked. I came out of there, and then next thing you know, I'm able to I'm able to really box in a different way. So I'm like, man, it made it to where I could fight body spammers more easily because I wasn't dashing and getting caught on the body trying to dash. Cause that's what they're banking on. Like they're banking on you trying to yeah, they're dodge. Doing this time. Exactly. So like there's times where I'm just in here, let him throw in my guard. And then I'm just walking in and out of range. Letting him crash, just let him crash. And then once you sock on him enough, then you beat him to the punch. So like once you see him going, then you, then you jump in with a jab. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's just building. You build, and then that's how you get what you're looking for. I think you're pretty good at being first, though. You just gotta really like know what angles to peel off of once you throw punches. Yeah, Make I was sure gonna call this stuck. one dude. Um, uh, you gotta watch the fight, really, but I was getting caught with this one dude. I was out boxing him still, but I was still getting caught like on my way back, and I was like, oh shit, what am I, what am I gonna do here? So I kept throwing too many punches when I landed the body jab. And yeah. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna just throw one punch because he would counter me with a straight. So I'm like, I'm, like, I'm gonna just throw one punch and just back out. And I started catching him like that. Oh, you started pop shotting him? Mm -hmm. Like just sniping him. Yeah, so like he'll stop, he'll stop right there or something. And I'll just, uh, and I'm out of there. Yeah. Like that. He'll he'll throw the he'll throw the one two or whatever. And as soon as he throws that two, I will catch him like that. No, yeah, yeah. That's all you got to do. It's the same as biting the shoulders. You know what I mean? You got to see what he's throwing. You got to stay busy out there, all right? And then you got to fight the other end. For straight the dude, spammers. I lost, the, the dude I lost to today. Man, if I if I would have knew how to deal with the body spammer at that point, because he would he would mix it up, but he would mostly body spam to get my stamina down. And I didn't know how to get out of that shit. And he would keep me in corners and shit. I'm like, bro, how the fuck do I get out of here? Yeah. So the next body spammer I had, I cooked him, but it took me a while to figure out like, oh, I should just tap the block and just keep yeah, walking. Exactly. So it took me, it took me a minute. Cause they don't know how to cut off the ring, bro. They just walk at you. Yeah, so and I was like, just, exactly. Around, yeah. They just do this all day. Yep. And so just follow you. And see, here's the thing. If I follow you and you spin around, right? Like, say you say you just hold your left stick towards me. See how the distance just increases? Yeah. Because you don't, if you just chase, it's the same as in real life. If you just chase, you're gone. Relax, relax. He's gone. Yeah. But if you cut, but you have to cut off the ring. So like, say you moving around, like just move oh, around, like I'm trying to get away from me. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You just got to cut off the ring. Mm -hmm. And that's what they can't do. And also you can do that. Just going corner to corner. You can do that against body spammers before they try to get to you. You can cut the ring off and have them like this. And then they throw their big body shots. From there, you just keep him like over here. If he tries to walk down, boom, get him. You know what I mean? Get him out the way. body spammer mix up cutting off the ring to get him to chase you and the lunge at you because like when he feels like you're cutting off the ring he's gonna throw a big punch to try to walk you into it and then you just stop short 
and you make a miss. <clears throat> and then you just let him like walk into jabs and stuff, you know what I mean? You just set him up. Cause even if his guard is up, you can still jab through the guard. You just have to set the angle up. Boy, skinny Luke, they're on right now, bro. Finna take him out the set. Bro, I'm not about to go hawk that nigga down. <laughs> that shit looks crazy. My page just like giving me a Randy. Shit, how the fuck is it? But when I did post, put our clip up, niggas DM me like trying to spar with me. I'm like, bro, I got a sparring partner, bro. I'm cool. Uh. Cause half you, half you niggas don't even know. I don't even play with your uh, OWC fighter one or two. Keep moving. Y'all just moving. make spammy bills and get your ass beat anyways. So it's just pointless. Like, it's not like it's gonna sharpen me fighting that. I already know how to deal with the style. Sure. I want to see what the punch totals were. Now you're getting better every time we spar because you're getting more experience online. Okay. Yep, your jab was your most landed punch, as it should be. Everything behind the jab. Facts. Literally, everything behind the jab, bro. Thank you.